the values that drive the organization, shared values, beliefs, superordinate goals, and then we can talk about uh, shared values and the vision and the common goals we actually need to talk. And that's why we used a lot of these post-its and then big boards to talk about this program. Hey, GCH is coming, talking about this, uh, put up the personas of our customers and users on the wall so people can actually get to see that. And some in the last organization I was working in, they actually put up the agile ways of working, Scrum, people working in Scrum teams and all that, they actually put it up on the board, big, huge photos and posters so that people can connect to it because it's a huge shift of uh, thinking and working. Um, skills, again, we talk about you know, in order to undertake the work, it could be, again, hard skills, soft skills, um, and then skills could be achieved by work experience. So you could actually get people who are experienced in that area. Again, uh, soft, this is a soft one, again, skills like the previous one. Strategy is, again, a way of doing things, an approach for defining, implement defined strategy, um, both internal, external. So you could have internal facing strategy as well as market facing strategies and approaches. Um, and then you actually could follow that using the strategic analysis There are different strategic analysis tools. Uh, one of the things that we had a look at yesterday was the most, uh, the mission objectives, strategies, and tactics. Similarly, we've got other uh, strategic uh, analysis tools um, that are at our disposal. We're going to have one later, it's called Poppet. And, uh, uh, and the Pold Act is another one, uh, how changing one aspect in the organization would affect the other part. So you need to look at all those other things, the Pold Act people, organization, location, data, and, and so on and so forth. Again, this is a soft area that needs to be addressed as. So if you notice, McKinsey looks at it as a soft and hard areas, really. And define the lines of command, control, structure, so organization structure, hierarchy. We discussed that. Centralized, decentralized, matrix, the multicultural, multi-skilled, multi-dimensional, cross-disciplined um, teams, again, could be one of these. This is a hard area because you're actually trying to address the roles, the responsibilities and how the command and control works basically. And you talk about system, you have got tactical, operational, you've got different types of systems, applications, processes, all of that. You know, we discussed that at length anyway. So you're talking about the, the infrastructure, moving them from one, one aspect to another, from on-premise to cloud, the cloud transformation, digital transformation, all of those could be part of that. In terms of the style, so the work culture, the management, we have, and then how you approach that, the style of it. You now you're talking about democratic, collaborative working, or is it more of uh, micromanaging, and then, uh, or is it more of empowerment of the teams? That's again the agile way, isn't it? De empowerment, customer engagement. So, and then the staff is basically looking at the resources required to fulfill that, to, to actually do the work. Again, different levels, different numbers, and blah, blah, blah. So you can, as we discussed yesterday, you could retrain the people, you could actually upskill and reskill some of the people existing who have got that, you know, that aptitude, or you can actually get somebody from other, from the team, a lateral um, recruitment, lateral hiring as what we call, and then the job rotation, somebody who has been working as a, a developer could be given additional role of a BA or a, or a tester, or similarly a tester could actually get into a role of a BA because they've got a similar approach and things like that. So you can try and do that. Again, this is the song.